In today's video, I'm gonna go over all the abilities in Dragon Age Inquisition and rank them from tier D to tier S, including the new upgrades from the Trespasser DLC. So let's get started. First, we have the Mage Spells. The Barrier is undoubtedly one of the most important spells in this game. It provides extra protection for a squad. This is also a big change compared to the previous Dragon Age games and they limited the number of potions you can carry while exploring and forcing you to fight strategically in the combat. The elegant defense reduced ability cooldown by 4 seconds, allowing you to cast the spell more frequently. The energetic defense holds your barrier longer before it begins to decay. You won't have a chance to survive without them. So this spell is on the tier S list. Next, we have the Mind Blast. You stagger enemies with an explosion of willpower that drives them back and less likely to target you again. Well, as far as I can tell, they are not less likely to attack you. It's also a detonation skill. You do extra combo damage when used on incapacitated foes. The fortifying blast replenishes your barrier every time you hit a target. The cleansing blast removes all negative standard effects from yourself, but not from your squad. Overall, this is a tier B ability. The dispel removes barrier and beneficial effects of enemies and also removes hostile magic effects from your squad mates. But compared to the same spell the mobs use, it only removes a tiny bit of barrier from the target instead of all of them, which makes it less effective. With the transmill magic, you gain 50% of barrier and 25% damage bonus by dispelling magic effects. The strength and well weakens the magic attack of affected enemies could be really helpful in the early games, but once you pass that phase, there's just no use to it. I'm putting this spell into the list of tier C. Moving on to the revival. This is definitely one of the most OP spell. Here I'm talking about the desperation. The spell revives your teammates and gives them invincible buffs while boosting their attack damage and attack speed for 10 seconds. And the cooldown for this spell also reduced to 30 seconds. If you have the superior amulet of cooldown, you can pretty much spam this spell like every 10 seconds. By doing this, you're turning your squad into some undead, unkillable killing machines. This is powerful whether you're in the early game or the end game. As for the life war, it's just not that impressive. Overall, this spell is on the top of the list. Moving on to the storm spells. First, we have the chain lining which shocks one target, then knocks to nearby others with up to 4 hits. The nice thing about this spell is the short cooldown and the low mana cost. The arcing surge allows you to hit up to 6 times. The distance bonus is also broader. Never strike twice, as it says. Chain lightning no longer strikes the same target more than once, but it does more damage. Both of these upgrades are great. Choose accordingly to your preference. This spell is on the tier A list. Then we have the energy barrage. With the energy bombardment, your projectiles will hit the same target and lower the target's resistance to your staff's magic attack type and the energy storm deals additional damage, but all the targets are selected in random. I'll use them both depending on the build I play. This spell should be on the tier A list. Next, the lightning bow. You summon a bow of lightning that paralyzes a single target at the cost of 65 mana, which is a bit too much in my opinion and I never get a longer paralyzed duration, even with a bunch of mobs nearby. Maybe it's a bug. Anyway, I can't say it's a decent ability with either upgrade. I'll say it's on the list of tier D. Then we have the static cage, which allows you to trap enemies inside an electricity field and paralyze those who try to leave. The lightning cage adds electrical damage to every hit you land, which makes this spell even more powerful. Also one of the best CC spells in the game. I'll definitely use the static cage ring to boost its duration if I had one. Keep attacking with the AOE abilities inside the cage. You're gonna be causing a ton of chaos and combos. On the other hand, the tethering cage allows the enemy to leave the static cage but takes constant damage. I just barely use this one. Overall, it's still one of the top abilities at the end of the day, which should be on the TS list. The Flash Fire is a single target damage spell, dealing 300% weapon damage and causing panic. I just can't find it any useful with either upgrades, so it goes to the TSC list. 
Dimly, it's a small AOE spell that causes a massive explosion and leaves the target burning. It's a pretty decent spell considering the low mana cost and the short cooldown time. The wildfire boosts the damage a little bit and reduces the cooldown by 4 seconds. The consuming fire is a bit interesting, which completely removes the cooldown, but increases the mana cost if cast multiple times in succession. This could be really helpful in certain builds, such as the Infinite Revival or Necromancer. All in all, this spell is on the tier A list. Onto the Fire Mine. This is the spell that everyone loves and hates. The upside about this spell is it deals the highest damage and all of the major spells and can be combined with the Bell of Inferno and the Chaotic Focus to boost its damage. The downside is obviously the bug which causes only one damage in most cases with a flaming array, which is really annoying when this happens. You can avoid this by choosing the Searing Glyph. It takes a short time to prime and you can have only one glyph at a time. A tough choice, so it goes to the tier A list. The War of Fire, a great spell for the early games, also able to CC by panicking the mob, but it becomes a pain in the ass in the end game, where the panic mobs are scattering around the field, and you need to chase them down one by one. It's on the tier C list. Moving on to the winter spells. The winter scratch is the spell you can use from the beginning to the end of this game. It's quick to cast and freeze a single mob for a combo. For the upgrades, both have pros and cons. For me, I'll always choose the AoE one over the other, but the Winter's Rune will come in handy in certain builds if you focus on single target damage. It's definitely a tier A spell. The only downside is the 65 mana cost being a bit too much. Then we have Face Step, which gives you fast mobility in combat. You can choose between damage and mana recovery. Both of them are excellent choices. I think it should be on the tier A list. Next, the Wall of Eyes. I just can't find a way to put this to good use. Maybe it's just me being dumb. Anyway, this spell goes to the bottom of the list. Next, the Ice Mine is pretty similar to the Fire Mine with a brittle glyph. It freezes the target and reduces its armor to zero. The Chilling Array puts three mines in front of you. This works amazingly when the fight gets intense and a very powerful spell in the early game. It's also a perfect spell to activate the ice armor that provides you more protection. A fantastic support spell in general. I'll say it's a tier A ability. The last spell in this tree, Melissa, can say it's good from my experience. The ice storm could potentially freeze the enemies, but it takes too long and not worth the effort. The winter winds will no longer consume your stamina, but the damage is poor and unable to crit as well. I'll say it's a tier D spell. Moving on to specialization spells. Starting with a necromancer, the horror, which causing the mobs to panic and scatter around on the battlefield. This is why I would not recommend this ability. You need the mobs to grow up. Other than that, it's also got long casting animation, and the damage is also insufficient. It should be at the bottom of the list. The spirit mark. It's a manipulated spell that allows you to control a hostile creature upon its death. But sometimes, even if you succeed, the creature will just freeze or refuse to fight with you. The whips of the fallen is also bugged. I can control multiple monsters, even if they die with the spirit mark. So, it's on the TSC list. Then we have the Walking Bomb, a spell that shines upon enemies' death with a virulent. Ideally, you execute the creature then set up the explosion to cause chaos, which is really hard to achieve. The concentrated detonation, on the other hand, is much simpler. The explosion deals more damage, but no longer affects nearby target. I still think the AoE one is better. Overall, it's certainly a tier A spell. Next to the Rift Mage specialization, the Veil Strike. The punching down applies weakened effects to targets that are not prone. The Wounded Veil can be cast only at your location, but the cooldown is reduced every time you take damage. This just doesn't make any sense. I'll say it's on the TSC list. Next, we have Stone Fist with the Shatter Stone, which hits hard, staggers, and weakens nearby enemies. Unblockable Force deals more damage against enemies with guards, which also makes no sense. Since Rift Mages heavily rely on drawing mana from weakened monsters, we have the passive ability of Restorative Veil. Well. I'll definitely choose the Shattered Stone. In general, it should be a tier A spell. The Pole of the Abyss. 
The best CC spell for sure. By pulling monsters together, your squad can deal a ton of damage. I always have a Rift Mage on my team just because of this spell. The other upgrade is just a bit bland, but it doesn't affect this spell being on the top of the list. Next, we have the Night Enchanter. The Spirit Blade provides you the capability to fight in melee. This ability also has its own recharge mechanic. You generate charge for your Spirit Blade by attacking enemies. The higher charge you have, the more damage you deal. This ability wasn't like this before until they nerfed it. Anyway, can say it's good or bad, I just put it into the tier B list. The Fake Cloak. You can use this spell for both offensive and defensive purpose. With the Cloaking Blast, you deal spirit damage to your target when you decloak inside the enemy. On the other hand, you can also use Fake Cloak when you are being stunned or knocked down. This will get you back on your feet right away. Absolutely a tier A spell. The last spell for the Night Enchanter, Disruption Field. You slow enemies down by creating this magical feel. It's just not as good as it seems. Also, there's not much to gain from it. It's not like you're increasing your attack speed or damage. Anyway, it's not decent, but okay, this should be on a TSC list. Continue with the roll abilities. The first one being the flank attack. A pretty good way to rush into your target. The skirmisher will get you into stealth of the world, while the bleeding flank leaves your target bleeding. The biggest problem with DOT in this game is they don't crit and won't be much abused unless they got fixed. I'll put it into the tier B list. The Twin Fangs is one of the primary offensive abilities for rolls, the Ripping Fangs being a flank ability more suitable for a stealth role, while the Unyielding Fangs will do good when attacking an enemy in front. A simple and practical ability, it's on the tier B list. Next, we have the Parry. I almost forgot about this one, so it goes to the bottom of the list. The spinning blade hits fast and deals multiple attacks in a short time, which works really well with masterworks such as the heal on head type. The fur spreads negative effects to nearby enemies and barely deals any damage, which should be on the tier C list. Next up, we have the death blow. Simply put, it's a free kill ability. When you saw mobs with lower health, it just ends them right away. And there is no cooldown with that blow if you perform a successful kill. Definitely feels satisfying after you pull off a kill streak. The surprise attack does just the opposite, which performs a two hit animation on a target with above 50% health. The first one now performs the other in my opinion. Overall, a must ability for Rose, and undoubtedly on the TAS list. To the Archery Tree. The Leaping Shot has its own pros and cons, which performs very well against larger targets and poorly with the small enemies due to the hitbox issue. The Rolling Draw provides you a power shot afterward with a knockdown capability. The shot from the shadows could increase your survivability by making you invisible. I'll say it's a tier A ability. The Long Shot is another amazing ability for archers. The chain reaction hits multiple targets if they're in a line. Well, even not in a line. This ability still manages to hit them. I think it tracks targets with a 45 degree angle. The Eagle Eye, on the other hand, deals single target damage at a greater range. An easy choice for me. It's on the tier A list. Next, the Explosive Shot. A decent AoE ability that deals decent damage when a bunch of mobs is grouped up and also knocks the main target back, which comes in handy if being attacked by melee weapons. I'll just put this on the tier B list. And then we have the full draw. The damage looks tempting. No doubt you would have picked this one if you played the game for the first time. But in fact, it's really a terrible ability. With long activating animation and hitting only one single target. I'll say it's totally not worth it. Unless you play the assassin. You might not agree with me on this one, but I'm putting it on the tier C list. Moving on to the poison skill tree. We got a lot of poison related abilities. First, with the poison weapons. As I said earlier before, the DOT's biggest issue in this game is not able to crit. Thus, anything related to poison damage is a negative. Good thing you can still recover your health when you attack enemies with a leeching poison. It's on the tier D list. And the same goes with cow jobs, another tier D ability. Then we have the hook and tackle, an interesting ability. As this one is not for combat purpose, but it does help a lot by increasing your mobility around the field. With the beast walking, you can use hook and tackle without stamina cost or cooldown time. 
The no escape allows you to trap an enemy upon arrival. It just makes no sense to me. Anyway, this ability should be on the tier B list. The Toxic Cloud is another DOT ability, but we don't need any damage from it. The loss in the mist is what we're here for. I would say it's absolutely another tier S ability. With the Elucid you got from it, you're having extra layers of protection, and you won't be hurt before the Elucid is removed, which makes your squad tanky as hell. The only downside about this ability is the busting sound effect, which is gonna accompany you even after you get back to Skyhold. Overall, a tier S ability. The last ability in this skill tree would be the Throwing Blaze, and this ability can be somewhat overpowered when facing a single target. With the precision targeting, you got damage bonus each time you hit the same target. When combining with a Flash of Fire, it stacks like crazy and able to take out any dragons within a few seconds, but a lot less effective against multiple targets. At least, it should be on the tier A list. Next up, we have Stealth, a must ability for Rose. Well, not necessarily. It's super useful in the early game, but as you level up, this is becoming less important as you are getting better at survival. It's crucial for assassins though. I personally prefer the Lost in the Shadows. It's a bit faster. And the clean shadows could be a lot better if the remaining in stealth works perfectly with the knife in the shadows. But unfortunately, only the first hit is a guaranteed critical hit. All in all, still a tier A ability. Then we have the evade. The hidden step deals damage with your decoy, but really hard to pull off. The shadow step is much more interesting. Instead of combat purpose, it's more useful outside the battle. You can use it as speedrunning, exploring, etc. Not a bad ability in general. I'll put it on the tier B list. The Knockout Powder. I'm just not a fan of support abilities when I'm playing a role. The only thing you can do with this is setting mobs up for a combo. Not that impressive, which should be on the tier C list. The Shadow Strike is definitely the ability every role needs. The Quick Blade is a melee ability that hits harder if you're in stealth, while the Long Shadow is a range ability that hits a target quickly. Both of them are amazing. Since it fits your playstyle, no matter what kind of role you play, I'll say it's on the tier A list. Moving on to the Assassin specialization. The Hidden Blade, it's got AoE and single target damage upgrade. In combining with the Knockout Bomb, it's a really powerful combo. The only downside of this ability is the long cooldown time. As assassins also lack the approaches to reduce the cooldown, but overall, it's still a powerful ability. It should be on the tier A list. The Knockout Bomb. I think this is the upgrade version of Knockout Powder, which has an AoE effect, making it more useful for combos. And it's obviously a tier B ability. Lastly, we have the Mark of Death. Absolutely an overrated ability, in my opinion. It looks beautiful if you manage to set it off. But it's got a lot of limits either, which makes you unable to perform in the middle of a fight. First, you need a target to stand still and not attack you. Second, you need to reserve your abilities to cast them in a particular order. Furthermore, it only deals damage to a single target. In conclusion, not worth it. This goes to the TSC list. Next, we have the Tempest specialization. Starting with a Flash of Frost, which gives you 85% damage resistance and freezes targets you touch. The bitter chill taunts nearby enemies, thus you are more likely to freeze them. With a the force by upgrade, your shattering combo also deals damage to nearby enemies. This is very practical. You can perform lots of combos with each of these upgrades, and the mobs can barely strike you back. One of the best abilities, obviously, is on the tier S list. Next, we have another mighty ability. The Flash of Fire. With this ability active, your skill costs no stamina and knock back whoever attacks you. The Unquenchable Flame even removes your ability cooldown, thus giving you unlimited potentials when combining with other abilities, such as Throwing Blaze, Leaping Shot, and anything you can think of. As for the other upgrade, you can just ignore it. In general, a tier S ability. Then the Flash of Lightning. When active, your movement becomes extremely fast. And this ability is incredibly OP when in the hands of the AI. Although not as great as the other two, but still a solid tier A ability. Next, we have the Artificer specialization. Starting with a spike trap, a solid AoE ability. Also has a CC effect, 
by blowing enemies into the air. As an artificer, your ability cooldown resets insanely fast. You can just pretty much spam it over and over again. Maybe it's just the class being too overpowered. But anyway, I'll rank this one a tier A ability. The elemental mines are also able to deal a ton of damage to a group of monsters. You throw extra mines based on your stamina if you choose to throw everything. And with the passive ability Opportunity Knocks, you can throw an insane amount of elemental mines onto the battlefield, which is absurd. The one shot seems a bit ineffective, but overall, still a tier S ability. The fallback plan is an interesting ability. I thought this was a useless ability, then I found out it's pretty hilarious. If you select the bait and switch, you can pull an enemy back with you. Thus, you could play a few tricks to pull a boss out of the map to perform an instant kill, which is really funny. If you want to know how this works, feel free to check this video. And I'm putting this one on the TSC list. Then we have the warrior abilities, starting with the weapon and shield. The shield wall provides you guard by blocking enemies attack, causing a bit of your stamina. But it could be a lifesaver. In some cases, it's much easier blocking than dodging. I'll put this one on the tier A list. You can use payback stride to recover from a disabled condition or knock down foes if you've taken damage recently. The sweet revenge makes you hit harder and stun taunted enemies briefly. The cruel revenge taunts enemies you hit. The damage is a bit low, but it is an AOE ability in general. I'll say it's on the tier B list. The shield bash being a powerful ability against all as well as the detonation ability. I prefer ring the bell for its rushing animation and deal additional 400% damage to guard. The cripple smash prevents the target from dealing damage with its next attack. Didn't find much abuse with this one and it goes to the tier B list. The lunge and slash would be a great ability if you have two warriors in your team. The effortless lunge costs you no stamina or cooldown if the foes are not focusing on you. Meaning if one warrior taunts the mobs, the other one will be able to spam this ability like crazy. It's also a detonation ability, which works really well in the early game when combined with the spells that freeze the targets. I'll say it's a tier B ability. I think the block and slash is an underrated ability. It's got decent damage and AoE effects if you choose a spinning defense. Although it only works with enemies with melee attacks and you need to block at the right timing. I'll say it's on the tier B list. Next we have the mighty blow. You deliver a powerful attack on a larger area and knock down all the targets. The easy target deals more damage to targets already been knocked down. Very convenient to use after a charging ball. The stay down keeps the mobs on the ground for longer. Both are great choices. This one should be on the tier A list. The pummel strike is quick, hitting hard and stunning a single target. But I always have a hard time tracking a target with this ability. The lightning jab deals more damage and stun a target for a longer duration. The staggering strike I think is currently bugged. It even stuns enemies are immune to this effect. For better or worse, it's still a very useful ability. It's on the tier A list. Next we have the whirlwind. With the rising winds, it becomes more effective the longer you sustain this ability. Which could be really overpowered if you manage to keep it long enough. You can also deliver a lot of combos when combined with a static cage. The Vortex of Steel seems a lot less effective, but still a tier A ability. The last ability for the two-handed trick is the Earth Shaking Strike. Honestly, I barely use this one, as it's at the bottom, which you need to spend a lot of ability points to reach. The Shielded Ground causes enemy burning, which barely helps. Anyway, I'll say it's one of the useless ability in this game. The Grappling Chain is a good way to group the monsters up. By using the chains for the day, you pull every enemy towards you within 5 meters. This is absolutely absurd. It has a short cooldown, you can spam it over and over again, and the mobs can barely strike back. The other one seems a bit bland by stunning a single target. I'll put it on the tier B list. Next we got a combat roll. This ability is originally for the positioning purpose, but after they added a new upgrade, it becomes really cheesy. The coming through deals insane amount of damage. You can pretty much roll your way to victory if you want. An absolutely broken ability. For better or worse, it should be on the top of the list. The Horn of Failure supports your team with both offense and defense. That's a spirit provides even more damage bonus. The fortifying blast grants guard to the whole team with each attack. I'll rank this one a tier B ability. 
Moving on to the Vanguard abilities. The War Cry is pretty much the best ability to draw the mobs to attacking you. Thus your other squads can focus on dealing damage. Calling to Arms gives you 200% armor rating, while the Battle Roar has a broader area effect. This should be a tier A ability. The challenge you taunt a single target and provides scar, but it can finally any use with neither upgrades, so it goes to the tier D list. The charging bow is a must for all warriors in my opinion, which works amazingly well, whether in short or long distance. The fall and tremble cause no stamina on your next ability. This is priceless if you play the Templar, and it also provides scar on hit. This is definitely the tier S ability. The Livy is able to drastically boost your survivability by providing you guard, damage bonus, and damage resistance. You can't ask for more than that, a solid tier A ability. The Bodyguard allows you to take a portion of damage for your allies. Not today reduces part of the damage you take, and over here taunts any enemy that attacks your ally. But I found this one certainly not working, maybe bugged. It's on the tier C list. Next, we have the Champion Specialization, starting with the Line of Sand. Oh man, this is a ridiculous ability, absolutely tier D. Then we have To the Death, an excellent ability when fighting a boss. Your damage increases over time until you finally take them out. The end guard is a lot better in my opinion, who's next is just not that effective. It's on the tier B list. The Walking Fortress is apparently one of the best abilities. You're completely immune to damage, which will save your life in many ways. The Siege Berserker reduces your cooldown time and increases your guard. I'll definitely go with this one. But if you prefer using Focus ability, you can choose the Focus defense as you generate focus every time you take damage. Needless to say, a solid tier S ability. Moving on to the Reaver specialization, the Ring of Pain. You create a ring which you find harder inside it. But I noticed that the damage boost only applies to dragon range instead of all your attacks. This makes it a lot less effective. It also drains your stamina constantly while active. I'll say it's not a sustainable ability, so it's on the TSC list. Next we have the dragon range, the best ability in this specialization. And it also changes how your river fight entirely. You shred through enemies at the cost of your blood. Every time you cast it, it costs you 2% of your health. Actually, I think it's 5%. The Ravage makes you fight harder and reduce the cooldown on Devour. The Leech Fury no longer costs your health, but your Dragon Range now has a cooldown. I'll certainly go with the Ravage. Overall, it's on a tier S list. And the Devour is pretty much tied to Dragon Range, which recovers your health that lost from Dragon Range. The consume boosts your crit chance of your next dragon range. Barely make any sense to me. The lifeblood deals more damage with your devourer and recovers more health. I'll say it's on a tier B list. Moving on to the Templar specialization. Starting with the spell purge and the wrath of heaven. Honestly, I think they are inseparable. And this is the way to play a Templar. You stun the mobs with wrath of heaven, then spell purge the mass detonate. It's really powerful if you combine them with specific masterworks, and undoubtedly they are on the tier S list. The Blessed Blade also serves as a part of the combo purpose. The lights in the shadows reduce the cooldown time of Spell Purge and Red of Heaven every time you hit an enemy inside the circle, thus you can spam the combo more frequently. Furthermore, it provides extra damage bonus when fighting demons, a decent support ability which should be on the tier B list. Lastly, I'll talk about the focus abilities. Honestly, I don't think they should take up one of your skill slots, cause they're powered by focus. You can't use one of these skills like the others. Having a focus ability is like having an extremely long cooldown ability on your slot. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. Skill slots in Dragon Age Inquisition are just too precious and can be spared for skills like this. Of course, you can use focus abilities to take care of some tough fights for you. But for the most part, I'll just leave them. So this is the skill tier list of Dragon Age Inquisition. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button or subscribe to my channel for more Dragon Age content.